Hello, pool players. In this video, I'm going to show you a system used to predict the path of the cue ball when hitting the cue ball with topspin. It can be used to play safeties, pocket carom shots, get breakouts, and much, much more. It's called the follow system. And surprisingly, there's very little information about it online. The system is a great tool, especially for newer players. However, it does have its limits. So make sure you watch until the end of this video where I will cover the situations where the follow system begins to break down. Before we get to the good stuff, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment or two. And don't forget to check out my other tutorials designed specifically for newer players. Now I hope you're ready to learn the follow system. In this first situation, the game is eight ball. The shooter has three stripes left on the table and their opponent has one solid. One option in this situation is to play a safety by leaving the cue ball on this area of the table. If you have been playing pool for a while, you may intuitively know where to hit the 11 ball and how to hit the cue ball in order to play this safety. If you are a newer player, pay close attention because I'm going to show you how to figure out where to hit the 11 ball. Keep in mind, this method of predicting the path of the cue ball after it hits an object ball only works if you are hitting the cue ball with topspin. Once you have an idea of where you want the cue ball to go, you have to envision how it's going to get there. In this situation, we want the cue ball to hit this area of the rail and land in this area of the table. Now that you know where you want the cue ball to hit the rail, imagine a ghost ball at this point. Then envision a line that goes to the center of the object ball through the center of the ghost ball on the rail. I frequently use my pool cue to help me envision this line. Next, you want to aim the center of the cue ball to the place where the imaginary line and the far side of the object ball intersect. Once you know where to aim the cue ball, make sure you consider how hard you need to hit the cue ball. In this situation, I need to hit the cue ball pretty soft, and I would rather hit the cue ball too soft, leaving the cue ball in this area of the table, then too hard, which would leave the cue ball in this area of the table, possibly giving my opponent an easy opportunity to pocket the one ball. Once you have your aiming point and speed dialed in, it's time to execute the shot. In this example, I am shooting solids, but I don't have an easy shot on the one ball or the three ball. One option in this situation is to carom the cue ball off the one ball to pocket the three ball. And I can use the follow system to help aim this shot. The first step is to decide where I want the cue ball to go and envision a ghost ball at that location. To ensure I do not scratch or get tied up with the 14 ball, I decided I want the cue ball to go here. The next step is to envision a line that runs through the center of the object ball and the center of the ghost ball. The point where this line and the far side of the object ball intersect is where you aim the center of the cue ball. Now that you know where to aim the cue ball, you can execute the shot. Make sure you consider how hard you need to hit the cue ball to play position on your next ball. In this next situation, the shooter has ball in hand and is attempting to pocket the seven ball in the side pocket and get the breakout on the six ball. To make sure I get a shot on the six ball, I need the cue ball to hit this side of the 13 ball so the six ball is pushed towards the corner pocket. Now that I know where I want the cue ball to go, I'm going to imagine a ghost ball at that location. Then I'm going to envision a line that runs through the center of the object ball and the center of the ghost ball. In order to get the breakout, I need to aim the center of the cue ball to the spot where this line meets the far side of the object ball. However, 
If I aim at this point from the cue ball's current location, I will undercut the seven ball and miss the shot. The aim line to pocket the ball from this location is here. So the cue ball needs to be moved until the aim line to pocket the ball intersects the aim point on the object ball. The aim line and the aim point are closer to intersecting when I move the cue ball here. And when I move the cue ball here, the aim line and the aim point overlap. Now that my aim is dialed in, I need to consider how hard I need to hit the cue ball. In this example, I need to hit the cue ball with a medium speed so the sixth ball moves towards the corner pocket and the cue ball moves away from the rail. In this next example, I need to pocket the two solids and then the eight ball for the win. Cutting the four ball up table to the corner pocket is a difficult shot, especially for newer players. So I need to find a way to pocket the two ball and play position on the four ball. The tangent line of the two ball intersects the four ball. So if I hit the cue ball with stun, I'm going to make contact with the four ball. There are a lot of things that can go wrong with this option, so it would be my last choice. I could stun the cue ball up table with just a little draw, but this is a pretty advanced shot that newer players may not be able to execute correctly. Hitting the cue ball with topspin and going off the rail for position on the four ball may be an option, but if the cue ball contacts the four ball, it could result in disaster. So I'm going to show you how to use the follow system, but in a slightly different way, to see if a follow shot is a good option. First, you're going to find the aim line to pocket the two ball. Then you're going to find the point where the aim line and the far side of the object ball intersect. Once you have that point, you're going to envision a line that goes through that point and cuts the object ball in half. This line represents the path a forward rolling cue ball will travel when pocketing the two ball. Keep in mind that the actual path of the cue ball begins at the point where the cue ball makes contact with the object ball. I can now be sure that if I decide to play a position on the four ball using topspin, I will avoid contact with the four ball and get excellent shape. In this next example, I am shooting stripes, and I want to play a safety by leaving the cue ball on this area of the table. The path I want the cue ball to take looks something like this. So I want the cue ball to hit this area of the rail. If I use the follow system, I can see that I need to aim for this point on the object ball. In this next example, I need to pocket the two ball and play position on the eight ball. When playing position on the eight ball, a lot of newer players will play this shot with topspin. So I'm going to predict the path of the cue ball using the follow system to see if this is a good option. First, I'm going to find the aim line, and then I'm going to find the point where it intersects the opposite side of the object ball. And I'm going to find the line that goes through that point and splits the object ball in half. This line represents the predicted path of the cue ball. And I can see that if I hit the cue ball with topspin when pocketing the two ball, I will hit the 11 ball, which may prevent me from getting good positions to pocket the 8 ball. One option to play position on the 8 ball would be to hit the cue ball with right spin. In this next example, I want to pocket the 9 ball in the side pocket and break out the 11 ball. First, I'm going to find the aim line to pocket the 9 ball. Now I'm going to mark the point where the aim line intersects the far side of the object ball. Then I'm going to imagine a line that goes through that point and cuts the object ball in half. This line represents the predicted path of the cue ball, and as you can see, if I pocket the nine ball in the side pocket and hit the cue ball with topspin, I will get the breakout.
Just like most systems in pool, this system has its limits. And there are some situations where this system just plain stops working. To demonstrate the system's limits and when the system begins to fail, I will shoot the same shot, hitting the cue ball with topspin each time, but varying the cut angle. On each shot, I will include a visual of the aim line and the predicted path of the cue ball using the follow system. I'm going to replay the shot again in slow motion. Notice how quickly the cue ball intersects the predicted path after making contact with the object ball. I have slightly increased the cut angle on this next shot. As you watch the shot again in slow motion, notice how long it takes the cue ball to intersect with the predicted path. As I increase the cut angle on each shot, you can see the cue ball must travel further after contacting the object ball to intersect the predicted path. The trend continues until the cut angle is a half ball hit or greater. A half ball hit refers to a shot where the aim line intersects the edge of the object ball. This is the point where the follow system breaks down and no longer works. Notice the path the cue ball takes in relation to the predicted path on this shot that requires a half ball hit. The path the cue ball takes is nothing like the predicted path. So the follow system will not work on any shot that requires a cut that is greater than or equal to a half ball hit. In this shot, the cut angle is greater than a half ball hit. I know this because the aim line does not intersect with the object ball. So I would not be able to use the follow system to help me predict the path of the cue ball on this shot. This is another example of a shot where the follow system does not work as intended. My plan for this shot was to play a safety that looks something like this. According to the rules of the follow system, I should aim here on the object ball. However, when I execute the shot, this is the result. If we look back at previous shot examples, we can see that at higher cut angles, it takes longer for the cue ball to meet the predicted path. This shot didn't work out as planned because it was not possible for the cue ball to intersect the predicted path in the short distance available. You can always use the tangent line rule to help you play these safeties. In this example, I was trying to play a similar safety, but with less of a cut angle. And it would have worked out as planned, except I didn't account for the double kiss, which caused the cue ball to scratch. So make sure you're looking out for the double kiss when you're using the follow system. Here is another example of a shot where the cue ball does not hit the predicted spot on the breakout ball because the cue ball does not travel the distance needed to intersect the predicted path. Although this system has its limitations, I believe it is a system that can help newer players control the cue ball in a variety of situations. It may take some practice before you can implement this system correctly, so don't get frustrated if it doesn't work for you at first. If you learned something new, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment or two. And don't forget to check out my other tutorials designed specifically for newer players. Until next time, play hard and have fun. Bye!